Hello everyone, welcome to another day of Clown Decade. Today, as you can probably tell from the title, we will be talking a lot about this little clip from the match between Millwall and Derby County. And I think the clip speaks for itself. Go through those subs again, because and they've got Frank Fielding, Sean Williams, Alex Pierce, John Daddy Bavarton, Troy Parrott, Skalak, Alexander, Fury and Muller. Yes, for those that don't live in England and don't watch much football, well, I don't watch much football, but even I know this. But basically, for those that are out of the loop when it comes to British football, before every single match that we have had since the death of George Floyd and since they've been allowed to play football again, there is about 10 seconds where they have to do, as you saw here, kneel down in support of Black Lives Matter. Millwall, being the epitome of the South FC meme, decided that it would be a very good idea to boo this particular act, which I fully support them on. Because if people haven't been following this channel too much, I am not a particular fan of Black Lives Matter because they are just a front for Marxism. And everything they seem to support seems to be bloody mental as well, which goes hand in hand with them being Marxists. And while actually quite a few people I know who watch football are also against Black Lives Matter and fully supported this booing as well and found it particularly funny, the mainstream media had to go in full damage control mode, along with politicians. Because of course they did. But I think first we will look at Politics Live, which according to the BBC would be their flagship politics talk programme. Though it's been losing popularity for quite some time and, you know, if all trends continue as they are, the Lotus Eaters will overtake them in viewership some point next year. Fingers crossed for that. But on Politics Live, they decided to get Ash Sarkar on, who constantly has a go at the mainstream media for silencing Jeremy Corbyn and all his supporters' voice, despite the fact she is a regular on these panel shows. So on the show, they started to get onto the subject of the Millwall fans booing the footballers kneeling for Black Lives Matter. You know, they are anti-police, they're anti-capitalism, they're anti-the family. They are a dangerous Marxist organisation. Yes, Richard Tice said everything correctly there. Black Lives Matter are indeed anti-capitalist, they want to get rid of the police force, and they seem to be against the family, or at least, at the very least I should say, Marxist people who support Black Lives Matter also seem to be against the nuclear family. And Richard Tice is a Brexit party, he used to be an MEP when we were still in the EU, and he's generally just a British patriot, and everything he has said there is correct. Now obviously, Ash Sarkar had some ramblings to say back at these claims, which are backed up by everything that Black Lives Matter say themselves. I mean, I couldn't help but laugh at Richard's earlier comments about BLM being a scary anti-capitalist, anti-family organisation. Is it because you know it's true, Ms Sarkar? As Wes said, it's widely recognised as a movement of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who share a shared goal about combating institutional racism, particularly in law enforcement. Yeah, sure, Ash. Uh, I mean, defund the police only got so bad that Obama had to come out and say, can you please stop saying defund the police is going to lose you followers and voters. So clearly when you say, oh, no, it's just this innocent organisation full of ideas. They, they're just against racism in law enforcement. No, Ash. They got so bad that Obama had to come out and say, please stop saying defund the police. Because what it reminds me of is the fact that Martin Luther King, when he was alive, never enjoyed the support of the majority of white Americans. He simply didn't. Two thirds of white Americans had a negative view of him. Oh my God, they always bring up the bloody Birmingham letter. Look, Ash, I don't care if Martin Luther King didn't like the majority of white people. It was a completely different fucking context at the time. You actually had direct laws and direct actions being taken that actually did oppress black people. These days, all your bloody Black Lives Matter heroes turn out to be the worst type of people on the planet. Every single one of them's a criminal and a rapist of some description. Why? Because he was characterised as a Marxist, as in league with the communists. And this wasn't some fringe idea, this is what the FBI was saying. Yeah, fine, whatever, Ash. The FBI were lying, who would have fucking thunk? But Black Lives Matter was founded by self-confessed Marxists and cop killers, and they are very fucking open about everything that Richard Tice was saying about them. They all agree with him that that's what they want. So I don't think there's anything wrong with being a Marxist. It would be kind of hypocritical if I did. If only you had some moral qualms about lying, Ash. However, this is how anti-racist movements throughout history have been delegitimized. It's by this kind of red scare tactics, and it's absurd. And I think, and I'm really 
glad about this, more and more people can see through the absolute absurd guff that's coming from people like Richard Tice. That was it, by the way. That was her argument. Literally a nuh -uh. And literally a nuh -uh because they lied about Martin Luther King. Uh, but I do find it amazing how she's like, oh, no, they're not Marxists. By the way, I'm a Marxist and fully support everything they say. Yeah, all right, Ash. You, you don't have a history of exclusively supporting Marxists. Now, why, why, why would Black Lives Matter attract Marxists? Oh, I can't think why, Ash. I can't bloody think why. How she can unironically say, oh, don't worry, Black Lives Matter aren't Marxists. It's just attracting radical Marxists like me into their ranks and expect people to not see that contradiction is beyond me. But I thought it was just worth having a little laugh at Ash Sarkar because I just want to keep pointing out that she has nothing interesting to say, but she is fun to laugh at. So let's get on to some actual serious points. Because a 10 second booing apparently is worth about 20 articles in a news cycle from all mainstream sources. So I'll start with the BBC. Millwall fans booing. Discriminatory fans cannot be tolerated, says the big brain footballer Wayne Rooney. Of course, given how politicised Black Lives Matter is, and how openly Marxist, as Richard Tice can easily point out they are, it might be worth pointing out that this might be more a political booing rather than a simply racist one. Though it is Millwall, so I will give him credit where it's due, it could also be racism. Derby County caretaker manager Wayne Rooney has urged football fans to not tolerate or accept the actions of mindless fans who take part in discriminatory behaviour because it's apparently discriminatory to boo a political organisation that wants the end of capitalism, the family and the police. Some Millwall fans booed the players taking the knee before Saturday's game against Wayne Rooney's Derby at the Den. Yes, some. I, I'm sorry, I'm going to play the clip again. Go through those subs again, because and they've got Frank Fielding, Sean Williams, Alex Pearce, John Daddy Bavarton, Troy Parrott, Skalak, Alexander, Fury and Muller. I mean, bear in mind, the stadium is about, you know, a fifth full or something like that, thanks COVID. But that was quite a lot of booing. That sounded like more than some of the fans, I have to say. Millwall say they are dismayed and saddened by the booing. They said staff and volunteers have worked hard to enhance the club's reputation, but admit there is still much work to be done. The Lions added they are committed to doing it to be a force for good. Because every company and football team now has to be ethical. The Den was able to host 2,000 home fans for the first time this season after the second national lockdown was lifted. The return of spectators was overshadowed by the pre-match incident. The Football Association and anti-discrimination body kick it out have condemned the booing. Former England captain Rooney, who side won Saturday's game 1-0, said afterwards it was disappointing and upsetting to hear booing from supporters. On Sunday, he released a longer statement about the incident and said Derby had been warned before the match about the potential response of some home fans. We were made aware of the possibility of a planned disruptive response during the taking of the knee in support of the Black Lives Matter campaign, said the former Everton and Manchester United player. On behalf of Derby County Football Club, I wanted to be clear to everyone associated with the club that we represent all sectors of our community regardless of colour, gender or sexuality. Jesus. It's just the ridiculous assumptions made to all these fans. It's like, oh, they booed and kneeling. They must be racist. Yeah, maybe they just want, you know, anti-British movements not to be celebrated and supported by basically their religion, because a lot of football fans are religiously dedicated to following their teams and the sport, which is fine. But once you have all these political movements starting to be supported by, well, everything at this point let's be fair you can understand why maybe they'd not particularly like the kneeling because black lives matter is a political movement and the fa is supposed to not allow political movements to be supported in football matches but here we are we've had it for months and they just don't stop I mean, that's not the only thing. Football is also involved in the Rainbow Laces campaign, which is basically there, you know, well, it's, it, what does it look like it's supporting? But it goes above and beyond anything we've seen before because the rainbow flag is all over football these days to the point where we are completely out of Pride Month and have been for months. And Sky Sports has the rainbow flag literally everywhere. It's in every cutaway. It's just above the scoreboard. I mean, I don't have images. You'll just have to take my word for it. But it is, I mean, I mean, I doubt anyone's going to distrust what I have to say here 
because they know the rainbow flag's bloody everywhere. It got to a point where I pointed it out to my dad who didn't even notice it, and he's like, great, now I'm never not going to notice it. Now, thanks, Harry. Oh, well, he'll get over it. But it just plays into my point that the most popular sport in Britain is being so politicised that are you really surprised that people are flying banners saying white lives matter and that Millwall fans are booing, kneeling a Marxist movement? And honestly, I don't know if Wayne Rooney actually believes what he's saying there, because he's not going to come out and say what Richard Tice said, because as you saw, the FA came down hard on Millwall after they booed the kneeling. So if Wayne Rooney says, yeah, I agree with them, he's not going to have a manager job for very long, is he? But it couldn't stop there, could it? FA launched an investigation into the events at Millwall and Colchester, where fans booed players taking the knee and police confirm they will meet with Kick It Out to discuss potential action. The Football Association said on Monday that it had launched an investigation. The governing body can impose financial penalties or ask a club to develop an action plan if fans are found to be behaving in a discriminatory way. Yeah, you you know, fans start booing, oh, you got to kick them out. The FA will be gathering observations from all relevant parties until December 10th. Bloody hell. And police will meet with Kick It Out to discuss the issue and potential action. It, it's crazy. Some fans booed. And like you're actually going to go out your way to make sure that they can't boo your zeitgeist again. God, I just want to get rid of the modern world. So the article just goes through what we already know, but then it gets on to what's actually going to happen. So a statement from the FA said, The FA can confirm that investigations are underway into crowd-related incidents at both the Den and JobServe Community Stadium on Saturday the 5th of December 2020. Observations have been sought from all of the relevant parties, and they will have until Thursday the 10th of December 2020 to provide their respective responses. The FA has not specified the terms of those investigations, but the organisation does have powers to take action against a club for discriminatory behaviour, such as chanting by groups of spectators. Yes, I can't think of exact examples off the top of my head, but I do know that Manchester United have had to change some of their chants to be more politically correct even including the line, we're politically correct, and then making a joke about a black player's penis. I just can't remember which one. I'm sure the comments will have the <laughs> chance that I'm thinking of ready at hand, though. So the investigation is likely to consider if the booing of players was a protest or discrimination, as well as what action the clubs took in managing the situation. How the hell are they going to determine that? 2,000 people booed? An FA regulatory commission can consider a range of actions where a club's fans have been found to behave in a discriminatory way. These include financial penalties and action plans to implement improvements to matchday operations. Sportsman reported on Sunday that there is uncertainty whether the flashpoints would meet the threshold for a proven action of discrimination. Well, I can tell you now it was not discrimination. I am pretty certain it was a protest against the politicalization of their favourite sport that they dedicated a lot of their lives to. And I can completely understand that. If they were racist, they would never ever watch football again because about half of the football players in Britain are foreigners. Or if not foreigners, they're at least non-white. Which is fine, and most football players are fine with that. Booing this kneeling is because they know that the heroes of Black Lives Matter are all criminals and they don't like criminals. Luckily, it appears that we have some sensible MPs who also happen to be cabinet ministers, which just makes me even happier. Black Lives Matter goes beyond equality, says cabinet minister. George Eustace issues implicit criticism of anti-racist organisation, which by the way, that is the Times trying to say that George Eustace is probably a racist. And just so you know, he isn't, he is just very sensible. A cabinet minister has described the Black Lives Matter anti-racism organisation as a political movement after footballers were booed for taking a knee at the weekend. Well, Black Lives Matter are anti-capitalist and want to defund the police, both fairly political aims. George Eustace, the Environment Secretary, said that in his opinion the movement was different to what most of us believe in, which is standing up for racial equality, oh, based. At the same time, he said it was right that racism in football was called out. He added, if people choose to express their view in a particular way, that should always be respected. And I completely agree. His implicit criticism of Black Lives Matter, implicit, follows controversy over fans of Millwall FC booing their own players for taking a knee on Saturday, as all elite teams have done since the police killing of George Floyd in the US in May. And again, that is still alleged. The trial is still going on. He will probably be let off because 
the coroner's report still show that George Floyd did not die of asphyxiation. Mr. Eustace appeared to suggest that BLM had an agenda beyond racial equality. Well, no shit. When he was asked for his reaction to Saturday's events, he said, I know obviously the issue of race and racial discrimination is something that we all take very, very seriously, he told Sophie Ridge on Sky News. My personal view is that BLM, capital B, L and M, is actually a political movement that is different to what most of us believe in, which is standing up for racial equality. Each individual can take their own choices about how they reflect this, and I know a number of people feel quite strongly and have taken that approach. And he's right. Um, <laughs> BLM do go beyond racial equality. They are a political movement that not a lot of people are fully aware of. And as he says, people can support them or be against them in any way they see fit as long as it's reasonable. And that's what most people have done. And to ban people from watching football live because they booed the kneeling? Yeah, that goes far beyond what should be acceptable. It's basically censorship. But I think my favourite headline so far has been from The Guardian. Booing those that kneel is an act of violent disrespect, a handshake met by a punch. Millwall fans desecrating the gesture has caused tensions in South London and changed the agenda for QPR's visits. QPR being Queen's Park Rangers, another football team. But if you... I, I, I mean, how fucking mental have you got, Guardian? You are saying booing is an act of violence. I just cannot take you seriously. I'm not going to go through this article because we have to save some things for laughing at the Guardian. But after seeing that title today, I couldn't just skip over it for this video. But I think the final thing I'll touch upon is the Millwall Football Club, their official website. Now as this webpage, United for Change. Inequality, United for Change. And it's, you know, backed by Kick It Out and Show Race and the Red Card. All because some fans booed. So this is what the website has to say. Players from Millwall and QPR will stand arm in arm with each other in a show of solidarity for football's fight against discrimination ahead of kickoff at the Den on Tuesday night. Hey, that's tonight. The two teams will hold aloft a banner to show their collective commitment towards ongoing efforts to rid the game of racism in a positive move, which has been supported by Kick It Out, Show Race and Red Card, the PFA, the FA, and the EFL following discussions with the club in recent days. So basically every football corporation and anti-racism charity is behind this, fine, whatever. Mill will believe that this gesture, which the club hopes to repeat with other visiting teams in the coming weeks and months, will help to unify people throughout society in the battle to root out all forms of discrimination. I cannot wait for more booing. Kick It Out's logo will also replace that of principal partner Husky Chocolate on the front of Millwall shirts for the London Derby. I, I can see why they booed. I mean, we've got the gist of this article, the rest of it's just pointless virtue signaling. But yeah, I can see why people would boo this. They have taken an inch, which was maybe for the first few games you'd be kneeling. And now they've got a mile in which they are kneeling at every game and the gay pride flag is all over every bloody channel that has football on now. And when there's any pushback, oh, they just keep going. Because what are the fans supposed to do? They keep wanting to watch football, but you keep pushing this stuff in their face. They are there to watch you kick a ball around and try and put it in either net. They are not there to be reminded of the current political goings on. They are not there to be constantly reminded that in America, a criminal died of a fentanyl overdose. They are not there for any other reason than to get off their tits on drink and to watch professional players who are overpaid and virtue signally cunts to kick a ball around and pass it to each other and maybe score past the goalkeeper. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of football. And this has been happening in every recreational activity for as long as Gamergate. And it's just got to a point where no one can trust any corporation because they all just keep putting in this bullshit into everything they do. We have Black History Month, we have Pride Month, we have these months to help all these minorities and apparently it's not enough they've got to have the whole bloody year i mean wales are having a black history year wikipedia's famous black people section two of them are half black and there are two other black people for a total of four famous welsh black people and they want a whole year in wales to teach about that can you see why people are fed up with these pushes and why they might boo footballers who are supporting movements that are pushing for this because I bloody can. Bloody hell, one cabinet minister says, oh, maybe BLM are a political movement. 
and the whole mainstream media is against him. It's ridiculous. And also, let's not forget the White Lives Matter banner that went over Bolton, I think it was. It was a while ago, and I did another video on it. But after that incident, if you remember, Blackpool Airport, that hosted the plane that had the banner, decided to just ban all banners from being flown from that airport because of this one sign. This one sign that everyone collectively said, oh, well, they're missing the point. Oh, no, Black Lives Matter. Oh, no, they're disrespecting the movement. It's ridiculous. Of course, Black Lives Matter is political. Of course, it seems to be a supremacy movement where any dissent needs to be silenced. And of course, your average person who goes to a football match to watch football is going to boo all of this crap that is being pushed, especially if they're from Millwall. But anyway, that is everything I had for you today. Thank you very much for watching. And as usual, until next time, goodbye.